Simon. What? What time is it? How do I know? Well, look at the clock, can't you? No, I can't without turning my head round. Why don't you look at the clock? I can't. I've got my eyes closed. <laughs> Douglas. What? Can you see the clock from where you are? Yeah. What time is it? Big hands on six and the little ones between <laughs> nine and ten. Oh, half past nine. Oh. <coughs> Yo, half past nine? So we're supposed to get us up at nine o'clock. Oh, I've got a busy day today. I'm going to be down the billiard hall at ten. What about me, then? Pub's <laughs> open at eleven. If she doesn't get me up soon, I'm going to be late. <laughs> Maybe she's overslept. No, she hasn't. I can smell bacon frying. So can I. That's funny. Why didn't she get us up, then? Uh, well, <sighs> I can tell you one thing's for certain. She's not going to bring us breakfast in bed. Morning, Queenie. Morning, Jack. Lovely day, isn't it? Hey, you forgot to give us a shout this morning. I didn't, you know. Oh, well, we must have been spark out then, because we didn't hear you. Well, where's the breakfast then? It's here. I'm eating it. No, 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 I don't mean yours. I mean ours. What are we having? Oh, well, what do you fancy? Oh, you mean there's a choice? Oh, hang on, I'll ask the lads what they want. Mm, do that, Jack. <laughs> Mm. But it's all right. She's in a good mood for the change. Lanham, what do you want for your breakfast? What is that? Anything you want. Must have been all that milk stout we poured down her throat last night. She's purring like a pussycat with four kittens. Oh, well, in that case, I'll have baked eggs, sausage, tomatoes, mushrooms, <laughs> fried bread, uh, toast and marmalade. <laughs> and a loaf. Bunny? Uh, just cornflakes for me. You always have cornflakes. Come on, give it a challenge. Give us something to get our teeth into. Sugar puffs, then. <laughs> With warm milk. Douglas? Chip butties. Chip butties for your breakfast? With vinegar on a tray. Right. There we are, then, Queenie. And I will have a pair of kippers and some nice brown bread and butter. Jack? May I ask you a question? Hey. Are you under the impression that this is a public cafe? How do you mean? I mean that breakfast in this house has, is, and always will be nine o'clock. It is now 20 minutes to ten. I know that, Queenie. I just told you, you didn't get us up. And you are not under the impression, then, that this is a public mm. cafe? Of course I'm not. No. You think it's the Flaming Ritz Hotel, don't you? Wake you up? I suppose you'd like me to act like a blooming chambermaid and come in with your morning newspaper and a cup of tea in bed. No, Coco. <laughs> and you can go and inform your nephew that the only way he will get Coco in bed is if I go in there and pour it all over his head. And you two can stand there with your tongues hanging out all day, as far as I'm concerned. I am not cooking four breakfasts. I knew it was too good to last. We'll just have bacon and egg all round, then. Uh, or sugar puffs. Well, make up your minds. Bacon and egg. Oh, well, the bacon's in the fridge, eggs are in the larder, and you'll find the frying pan on the stove. Well, what am I supposed to do with it? Would you really like me to answer that, Raymond? <laughs> Well, there's no need to be like that, Quinny. All right, so we had a lie-in. We had a late night, didn't we? You don't have to tell me you had a late night. I heard you having it till 4 a.m. this morning. And what, may I ask, are those bottles doing on my sideboard? They're empties. I can see that. I knew they wouldn't be full if you'd been at them, Jack Shepherd. I asked you what they were doing on there. Well, I left them there for you. What has? A tip? Cos I finished running down with get thruppence a bottle when I was four years old. And you, may I ask you what your shirt is doing on the back of that chair? Oh, that looks smoky. Mm. Well, I can see it would hardly pass the whiteness test. <laughs> That's telling you. Yeah. 
And I'd like a little word in your ear, Bunny, my precious. Why don't I keep my big mouth shut? <laughs> it's about my shoes, isn't it, Mum? Yes, love. Uh, what are they doing there in the middle of the table? <clears throat> I put them there, Mum. Well, I knew they hadn't just <laughs> flown up there on their own. Either they're as ornaments or uh, are you trying to tell me something? No, well, you see, you forgot to polish them yesterday, so I thought if I left them there, it'd be a reminder for you. <laughs> you mean more of a, a subtle hint? That's right. Well, this is my subtle hint. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Now you can polish them yourself, can't you? Excuse me. Morning, Douglas. Good morning, ma'am. Are you lying comfortably? Yes, thank you. Then I'll begin. I don't mind you using my living room carpet as an ashtray. I never said anything when I found your socks in the gas oven or that half-eaten cheese sandwich under your pillow when I made your bed yesterday. But if you're waiting to have your breakfast in bed, then all I can say is that your roommates are going to be sharing this room with a skeleton! <laughs> Isn't there any cheap butties, then? <laughs> Today being Friday, I have some very important things to do. Why, Mum, where are you going? Well, first of all, I'm going to have my hair done. Then I shall be going down to the Midland Hotel for lunch. After that, I shall be playing bingo, and then I may go to the pictures. Who's going to cook the dinner, then? That, Douglas, is a matter for you to decide. All I have to inform you lot is that from this moment on, Queenie Shepherd is going on strike. On strike? What are you talking about, on strike? I am downing tools. Vacuum cleaner, shoe brushes, washing machine, ironing board, the lot. And I shall stay on strike until you lot mend your ways. <laughs> he doesn't mean it. <laughs> she means it. Hey, Queenie! <laughs> <laughs> Queenie, um, would you say these sausages were done? <laughs> Just about. Uh, but next time you fancy a fry up, why don't you put a knob of lard in the frying pan? Oh, uh, to bring out the taste like? Something like that. Uh, burnt bangers. Right, it's not like roast beef, is it? No, there's nothing like that for Sunday dinner. Roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, spring cabbage, new potatoes covered in butter and treacle tart to follow. You know, I've had a dinner like that every Sunday for as far back as I can remember. Until today. Oh, I should be having it today as well. Oh, what, you, you mean you're going to cook us a lunch, are you? Oh, no, I couldn't do anything like that. Call me whatever you like, but don't call me a blackleg. <laughs> no. <laughs> I shall be uh, popping down to that little cafe in Market Street. You know, they do the best Yorkshire pudding north of the Trent down there, cooked as it should be cooked, <laughs> under the joint, all crisp and golden and bubbling over with beef gravy. Hey, of course, we could always come with you. Oh, you're more than welcome, love, but uh, it does come a bit expensive. I don't suppose you could sub us a few quid, could you? Oh, no, I couldn't do that, love. Out of the strike fund, you mean? No. <laughs> Only uh, fully paid-up members of Queenie's trade union are eligible for supplementary benefits. Queenie, can't go on like this, you know. <laughs> It can, you know. I can hold out till Christmas if necessary. That's the advantage of being a one-woman trade union, you see. You get 100% solidarity. No, no. <laughs> I'm not talking about you, Queenie. I'm talking about us. Now, look, I'll have my cards on the table. I've had a word with the lads, and uh, they are willing to enter into discussions. Well, you know me, brother, or should I say brother-in-law, I am always ready for negotiation. Well, uh, speaking on behalf of the lads, uh, they are prepared to make uh, certain concessions. Is this a direct approach or more of a, an informal feeler? Uh, no. no, no, this is, this is official, Queenie. 
Uh, we are willing to admit that you do have a point with regards to uh, faggins on the carpets and cheese sandwiches under the pillows. And what level did you reach this agreement? At Douglas level. And what about a measure of good faith at Raymond level, Bunny level and Jack level? No, Quinny, the decision is unanimous. <clears throat> we, all of us, we've all decided to pull up our socks. Ah, but are you going to pick up your socks? That's more to the point. <laughs> and your mucky shirts and your empty bottles. Yes, you can come back on your own terms. Oh, I fully intend to come back on my own terms, love. And these are my terms. Oh, come off it, Queen. No, 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 we're not going to have this. You're holding us to ransom. That's what you're doing. Well, call it whatever you like, but these are my terms. One, you do the washing up. <coughs> Me do the washing up? Well, why not? Well, sissy. <laughs> Two, Bunny does the shopping. Three, Douglas gets the coal in. Four, Raymond makes the beds. And five, I have a day off every Saturday. Very well, then, Mrs. Shepherd. I will... Give this to the executive. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you this for nothing. They won't like it. Well, but in that case, may I suggest a reasonable alternative? And what is that? They can all lump it. <laughs> <laughs> Sooner slit me throat. Well, what about you, Douglas? I'm hungry. We're all hungry. We've got to show solidarity, all for one and one for all. The people's flag is deep as red. We'll draw the doll and stay in bed. Put the hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. What the hell have we got to sing about? It's Queen of the on strike, not us. Yeah, and she can stay on strike for all I care. You won't catch me doing the washing up. We've got to sit it out, that's all. Seal cracks first. Well, we all agreed on that. I mean, is that your unanimous decision? Yes. Too flaming true. Douglas? I'm hungry. <laughs> I wish you'd belt up about being hungry. Now, forget about your belly and think of your pride, because if we give in... You know what will happen, don't you? Yes. What? I'll get me Sunday dinner. <laughs> Douglas, it is either us or Queenie. I mean, one of us has got to go to the wall. Now, are you with us or against us? I'll think about it. Go on, then. Take your time. <laughs> I've thought about it. So are you with us? <laughs> yes. But I'm still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> They won't make themselves. Well, have you all had an opportunity to discuss my terms? Yes, and we reject it completely. We find ourselves unable to accede to your demands. Well, then, in that case, I have to inform you that the strike will continue and bubbles to the lot of you. <laughs> I am just going out for lunch. Shall I bring you back a bag of crisps between you, or would you just like a sniff at the menu? Ma'am. Ma'am, you couldn't bring us back a roast beef sandwich, could you? I'm sorry, Douglas. That comes under strike breaking. <laughs> ma'am, ma'am! Yes, Douglas. If I wash my own cup and plate up and bring the coal in, will you bring us back a roast beef sandwich? I'm sorry, Douglas. But I have not got the authority to negotiate unilaterally with individuals. <laughs> it's either all of you or none of you. Well, if it's none of us. Yes, well, I shall look forward to seeing how you all feel at breakfast time tomorrow. Breakfast time? <laughs> what about tonight's supper? You mean your usual cold roast beef, pickles and red cabbage? Uh -huh. uh, and chips. We always have chips. Don't forget the chips. <laughs> I'm not forgetting the chips, love. I tell you what, why don't you pretend you're on a diet? <laughs> now, you see, you wouldn't be told, would you, you blackleg? You see, once you start to weaken, she'll hold out forever. <laughs> Jim, we always have chips. We always have chips and corn rolls, beef and stuffing and pickles and cold custard tart. <laughs> <laughs> it's crack 
fucking chat. We've got to do something quick. You don't have to tell me, do you? What have I just said? We've got to make her break first. I know someone who'd make a crack. Me dad. Yes, he'd crack it all right. <laughs> crack it on the backside, he would. Look, I, I wish he'd walk through that living room and see the state of it. He'd kill her. Keep talking, Bunny. Keep talking. Oh, he would. He'd knock her as far back as our rent book. <laughs> hey, I like it. I like it. Well, there's, there's no use talking about it. He's in Carlisle, isn't he? You know that, and I know that. But does Queenie know that? Well, of course she does. It, it won't be on for weeks. How do you know, Bunny, eh? I mean, for all you know, he might be hitting a lift at this very moment. I'd be very surprised if he was. So would someone else, mate. So would someone else. What do you think about that, Douglas? What? About making our man believe that my dad's coming home. What do you think of it? I wonder if he'll bring some chips in. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I heard them. Now, shall I have the lemon fondue or the nutty crumble? It might be important. We shall never know, will we? But it, it might be an important message. Hey, Rick, go and see who it is, will you? Okay. Can I have a chocolate, <laughs> ma'am? No, Douglas. Not on an empty stomach, love. It'll make you bilious. Come on in. Um, someone to see you, ma'am. <laughs> Mrs. Shepherd? Yeah. Underwood's the name, Mrs. Shepherd, Mr. Underwood. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Underwood. <laughs> oh, pleased to meet you, Mrs. Shepherd. What a nice room. Very homely. <laughs> Get on with it. <laughs> oh, oh, only I was just passing, Mrs. Shepherd. You see, I've just come down from Carlisle. <laughs> well, perhaps you'd like to sit down, Mr. Underwood. <laughs> <laughs> Only where it is. I'm a very big friend of Leonard. Leonard who? Lionel, you stupid bird. <laughs> Did I say Leonard? I meant Lionel, your husband, Lionel Shepherd. <laughs> Only I sometimes call him Leonard, you see, and he calls me Jack. <laughs> That's nice of you to drop in, Jack. Who? Oh, oh, no, 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 it's not Jack, it's Ted, you see. Only he calls me Jack, you see, you're Lionel with me calling him Leonard. <laughs> well, he always did have a very dry sense of humour. How's he keeping? Oh, lovely, thanks. And he sends love and kisses to all. <laughs> and says how much he misses you. <laughs> Doesn't sound much like my Lionel. Hey, he must have had a few. <laughs> had a few? Had a few? Oh, he'd had a few, Mrs. Shepherd, yes. Oh, give her my love, he said. But it was the beer talking, I could tell. He'd had 17 pints. Well, that sounds more like my Lionel. <laughs> Only, to come to the point, the old point is, me and your Lionel are working together on this building. Lord. That's what I say, road, uh, building this uh, road. Only the old point is, you see, we're not. Not what? Working on this road, what we're building. <laughs> We've struck a gas main, do you see? Woof, it went, and you're damned, you see. So, so they've laid us off while they get it, uh, well, they get it uh, plunged. Well, how long for? How long for, you ask? How long for? <laughs> what you're trying to say is that you've all had an unexpected holiday. Am I? Unexpected holiday. Unexpected. You've had an holiday. Have I? Lionel's had an holiday. That's right. So, to get to the point. Okay. Oh, so. <laughs> to get to the point. He's coming home tomorrow. He's what? <laughs> With a place looking like this? Yeah, and he says he's getting a lift home on one of the lorries and he'll be here in time for his breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all right? You bloody old we done it, she's fainted. He said a quick. Oh, here. Yeah. Come on, shove on. Uh, 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 
Don't stand there with your mouth open. Let me do something. Uh, Don't uh, get a glass of water. Oh, the glass is in mucky. <laughs> well, wash one then. Uh, Ray, Ray, come on, give us a hand. Come on, uh, get into the bedroom. Do you want a chocolate? Oh, Get over! <laughs> yes, Mum? No, Raymond, it's one ring for you and two for our Douglas. Oh, it's washing the windows, Mum. Is there anything you want? Well, uh, I just wanted to see if you were managing all right with your mum poorly. Oh, there's no need to worry about your thing, Mum. The old place is looking like a new pin. Oh, oh Mum, I polished my shoes. Look, you can ah, see your face in them. Lovely. Mm, they smell nice, too. Oh, I use lavender furniture polish. <laughs> <laughs> what did you use for the furniture? Boot polish? Oh, no. Our Jack's hair restorer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it never worked on him. I hope it doesn't work on my sideboard. <laughs> Hello, ma'am. Do you want your windows done? No, love, you've done them twice and you've made a smashing job of it. Do you want all them grapes, then? Well, go on. Help yourself. You've earned a five-minute break. Here we are, then, Queenie. Breakfast. Ooh. There. Two boiled eggs, lightly done, and some cream stout to keep your strength up. Oh, on. you are good to me, all of you. Yes. Well, we, we wanted to talk to you about that, Queenie. You see... We didn't think you'd take it as badly as you did. You see, we just wanted to frighten you into ending the strike. So you mean it was all a put-up job? Yes. I'm sorry. And there was me thinking you'd all turned over a new leaf. So I haven't won my battle then, after all. You most certainly have not, our ma'am. It's just an armistice till you're better. About if your dad walks in and finds me over slaving over hot stove when I'm not well. But he won't, ma'am. We've, we've told you we made all that up. Ah, you may have thought you made it up. But it just so happens that I've had a letter from your dad this morning. It arrived while you were making the beds. What do you say? He's not really coming home, is he? Oh, but he is. When? Today? Ah, now that's something you'll never know. It may be today, it may be next week, or it may even be three weeks' time. All I know is that if he does come home and... Find this place looking like the bottom of a parrot's cage, meal in bed. Well, <laughs> I don't know what he'll do to the lot of you. Well, you will be ill in bed. You're better now, aren't you? You know something, Douglas? I have a dizzy spell every time I think of what he's going to do to you. <laughs> I think you'd better all get back to work. and You can start by cleaning the bathroom. Yes, ma'am. Bunny, you can go and do the shopping. And Raymond... Vacuum the carpet. Well, I've vacuumed it once, Mum. Well, vacuum it again, just to be on the safe side. And I think you'd better start peeling the potatoes for lunch. Trust you to come up smelling the roses. Mm. Hey, Queenie. Is he really coming home? That Jack is something that you will not know until he arrives. And another thing. Did you really faint last night? That's something you'll never know either. Ha, <laughs> <laughs>